What up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Reintro, aka the New Brown Order. This is a dope name I got from my my boy, my brother, my best friend, my pro, my co-host. Hey guys, this is Shree. Um, once again, we're back uh, with uh, episode two of this uh, segment, uh, Reintro, and uh, yeah, we hope uh, you enjoyed the first one. And I am Chef Suhi, and we are back. Like he said, I am excited. Uh, first one was great. Uh, we want to only build off on that. Uh, I was getting kind of a little, little itch, but we are here. We are live. Uh, I don't know if you know this should be tomorrow. I know you don't follow football, so tomorrow is the draft, the NFL draft. That means we're gonna get new team members, a new member of this family. Represent. You should actually, yo. Honestly speaking, by marriage, I know you're a Seahawks fan. Uh, I respect that. You know, you gotta respect your wife's uh, choice in teams. And I have nothing against bad against that. But yo, bleed blue. I know you know that. I am crazy. You won't get my passion about it. But tomorrow is a very important day in my life. It's like my birthday in a, in a sense. <laughs> We're getting. Uh, I'm going to the. I'm going to the stadium. I'm going to oh, the nice. tour. Yeah, yeah, could they have a a party, a draft party? Like a tailgate. So, uh, yeah, they have some people actually do that. You're legit. Uh, the football atmosphere. There's nothing, nothing in the world like it. It's like the best way to describe it is you. All these maniacs love and hate the same thing. And you're there for one thing, and purely that one event. It's like one joy. Either you're on the opposite to- uh, opposite side of the team, or you're rooting for the home team, which is the Giants at the moment. I'm not fucking going to anybody else's stadium. Uh, but yeah, tomorrow draft. I want to take an aisle now, but yo, it's gonna be a little chilly for some reason. It's like 54 degrees and like windy as shit. Um, so tomorrow I'm gonna uh, excuse me. So I'm gonna take. I'm gonna be Umber. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Amar. I think Unkin, uh, Kakardia is up. They're gonna be there. Uh, so we're gonna. Like, I'm gonna see the Giants fans. Like the Giants fans. Like we still have. Uh, I have like a chat where I'm always communicating with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so tomorrow we're gonna go there. Giants have fifth and seventh pick. Fingers crossed. They've been shit for so many years now. I hope they go in a better direction. Uh, but tell me about your weekend, weekend, bro. So my weekend was uh, pretty good. Uh, we have uh, some uh, crazy development dur- throughout the week, actually. Uh, one of the mornings, uh, I just came back from Starbucks. Uh, Ming and I generally either she goes in her car, I go in my car, and uh, I came back, and there were nobody there when I left. And I came back between like 15, 20 minutes, and there was a whole line of police cars uh, blocking our, uh, you know or uh, cul-de-sac trying to come in um and there was a couple of um, you know f- fire trucks and stuff like that so i was like maybe something happened you know things happen sometimes they're just doing some work or sometimes something happens next to the stadium so they have uh, they have they're always doing some kind of work so i was like maybe it must be something i came upstairs and i started uh, got busy with my work excuse me and everything like that and uh I didn't hear much of it and then uh, a little while later we get an email from our apartment complex saying that hey there's going to be some police activity uh please cooperate with them uh you know sorry for the inconvenience i'm like what happened and then i started uh, to google and try to find that stuff turned out to be um some person came into the apartment complex and uh, slaughtered Two people uh and this happened like the floor that was right under mine and it was uh it was a little shocking to hear that this, all of this had happened and uh you know uh, megna and i talked to each other and we were like we're not sure what's happening i went downstairs to ask what exactly happened and uh, there was not much information however over the days as things started to uh, uh you know uh, uncover Turned out to be that there were uh, there were two co-workers. Uh, one of the co-worker um, apparently was not okay with the other one who used to live in a different city. Who came here actually the night before at 9 p.m. He actually came to our door 
multiple times and he looked through uh you know the camera multiple times through my uh you know ring doorbell you're talking about and, this story right uh, yes yes this is the one. Oh man go ahead go ahead go ahead. keep going so um so yeah he, you know we didn't know that he was here yesterday of uh, the day before of course and in the morning i guess he had waited uh for their apartment to open up the people that he the person that he really wanted to see um i we don't know how he got into the apartment but he went to the apartment and uh he apparently killed that that person who was living there and the person's roommate who had nothing to do with the situation from what i understand so yeah and uh uh and when the police someone from the apartment complex had called in and said that hey we hear some assault noises uh in the morning so this happened uh, he waited from 9 p.m onwards probably from what i understand to five something in the morning to do his thing in the building he was just walking back and forth every floor and the way he killed was it was a weapon a uh, knife it was on the uh, floor the floor right under us yeah and uh, this happened in the morning and right around the time literally it's something that i just walk out to go grab a coffee i come back and you know that's what happened just a few apartments down Damn, on the bro, next and floor but, yeah. i've been to i've been to your place your place is i honestly felt more safer at your place than i used to feel in parkwood <laughs> <laughs> well yeah <laughs> they got true. their they got a pretty decent security but and again this is not like some this wasn't some random attack it was a targeted attack from what we understand so the person who was trying to do this was determined from some people we have also heard that this person has already been here before because they were co-workers these people that were involved okay so it's possible but uh, so they, it was a vendetta bro there was a, they, kind definitely... of like that yeah oh, well, we talked about uh, uh the officers had a meeting actually this week uh downstairs in our in our club area yeah. multiple officers came and they explained us the situation they couldn't reveal a lot of information but it was all, already the information that's already out in the news and everything like that so it's not anything surprising but uh, they said that when they got the assault call and when they got into the apartment yeah. um the the person in interest or the person who has been accused uh, is a suspect he's not accused i don't think he's accused yet but he's a suspect uh-huh. and uh, he was lying in the room itself like he was in there with them uh, with some minor injuries but um yeah it, so yeah that that's basically what my he was, pre- he was pretending was. he was pretending to be a part of, oh he probably he was pretending to probably to be hurt so they don't like suspect probably. him probably probably because they they took him to the hospital first and a couple of detectives things didn't make sense so they decided to interview him and they found out that it seems like he could have been the culprit like he could have been the person but his um his i think hearing is on uh, may of 6th so i guess we'll find out uh let's see let's see like it says His name is he's 26 year old name is Rami Fahim. Yeah, honestly speaking, man, it's the you know what's crazy? There'll be multiple things taken out of this and people are going to spin it, especially like you know politician stuff. One, they're going to say about and he used a knife, right? Imagine it was gun. Imagine yeah. a gun. It would be a much more higher up I like up four of things. Um I feel like your murder by knife is much more crazier um and it wasn't a house knife it was a it was it was a like weapon a butcher knife, knife? Yeah, okay, i don't like know a... what they didn't tell it but they said it wasn't a normal knife that you find in your kitchen uh, let's see let's see let's see let's see does it say police found a large knife at scene okay let's just call it a butcher knife okay those that's a massive knife um yeah bro to murder especially with a knife you basically i don't know bro i think uh, pulling a trigger and stabbing Yes, murder's murder, but I think you need to be very hateful in order for yeah. you to like stab. You gotta like, have some kind of. You, you you really want to get that person blood on you, like you hate that that much to the core. Whereas the shooting is like it's quick, unless you're like you know torturing them, shooting them every different body parts, and let le- letting them suffer for that. At least that is still a bullet shot. Whereas I don't know, bro. I feel like cutting somebody or stabbing someone. And these guys were educated kid like the person who I mean, do, we, do we really need to be education you could be educated and yeah, evil like true. look at the world 
bro. It's just like, I don't think educate. That's the thing people look at and uh, is driven out of like, people feel like if you're educated, you can get, get away with anything. That's not true. Uh, a human behavior happened. This was a human behavior. No matter yeah. what the education is, hate, revenge, uh, lust, love, any of this empathy, sympathy, any of these emotions, no matter what wealth status, education you have, every and how poor you are, everyone goes through this. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. But uh, but I'm just I'm just saying. Forget education, yo. Look at this way. Like most of the serial killers are geniuses. If you ever think about this, for you to pick a person out. And make them disappear where police cannot find them. You know, detective, educated people, like police can. That's why I like the Batman. Okay, we're gonna talk about movies and uh, things yeah. today. And if you see Batman, I know you haven't finished it. If you see Batman, it shows you how a real criminal is. Like Batman, what they try to achieve is where a possibility. If a Batman exists, this is what he's going to go against. Because Batman is the most realistic superhero you could possibly have. He has armor, which you, um, you can make. Like Iron Man, except the fact he's not flying and shit. He has a grapple hook, which is, exists. He has, you know, a boomerang. Uh, his bat wings have boomerang features. Like, you know, he is a very realistic superhero. He's like, and he has a motive behind it. And you could see the police hate him because he's doing their job but better he's a detective he's using his power resources his own self you can see the the freaking toll is taking on him you feel the anguish the pain the like he has to choose either he's batman or he's bruce wayne like he's choosing what he wants to do and if nobody knows who bruce wayne is and if this is a spoiler to you screw you uh yeah. fucking <laughs> if you're finding out who batman is right now Oh man, oh, you need to get out of the real house. Uh, anyway, so let's you know, get to uh, you said something about Batman. I would like to let you know that uh, when I grew up uh, in India, um, oh. I, my first uh, Batman uh, were shows and cartoons mostly, but yeah. shows used to be dubbed in Hindi. So I, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. And I, I remember there was a specific scene where this is one of the older Batman ones where where apparently there's an uh, there's a fight with him with the Joker, and yeah. it's the Joker, Robin, and Batman and a bunch of their henchmen, you know, trying to fight them. And it's in a yeah. noodle factory, um, and it was just really interesting because I had never seen a noodle factory, you know. And it was like I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, this is a new one, right? Yeah. No, so I got rid of that shit. Alright, cool. Yeah, this is a new Batman. Um, this is the one that's on HBO now, and we can openly talk about it. And most of the movies we can openly talk, they're available to stream everywhere. Uh, but yeah, like, like I'm using Batman as comparison. Like, Riddler is a true... It shows you how all these serial killers that have been around, like Ted Bundy and all this stuff, like making a murder and stuff, that have been around and been able to escape, been able to get away from, like, hundreds of police people doing police work you know they go i mean i hope they go through training to actually do some shit or what the fuck are they doing like what the fuck is their occupation if they can't do shit like that but they are these geniuses okay they are i don't care what anybody says they are smart as fuck for you to basically sit there and study human nature your target study their nature to the core to just wipe them out of the whole existence. Like, so Zodiac Killer, he used to fucking, like, know exactly how to pick up. Yeah. He knew it escaped. Like, what was one of the... Was it Ted Bundy, I feel like? The one who went from, like, uh, all the way from uh, Michigan or whatever, all the way down to Florida and killing girls and shit. Like, all these little tees. He used to be, like, he was, like, handsome and smart. And people used to love him. He was charming. And he used to, like, just kill him. Uh, I think like, is that I think is that his name is Pliers or something? No, I think it's Ted Bundy or some shit. Anyways, okay. we're jumping on topic, but yeah. my thing is like, yo, um, no matter what the education is of the person, like even geniuses can be put in the wrong place. Like for example, uh, what do you think about Elon buying uh, Twitter? Uh, it's interesting. It's very interesting because a person who who has a lot to say has to borrow this large um, you know um, megaphone to talk into now he owns this megaphone and he can he can 
make all kinds of sounds and things with it you know um there it's i think i think it's a sense of control on on freedom of speech kind of statement on a higher level if you will but i don't know ah uh, okay i feel like this was going to happen one way or another no matter what we all expect expect a billionaire to be stupid with this money we just wish we wish because there's so much money they have and the reason why i say this it was bound to happen in one of the lifetimes and i'm glad it happened in ours and i'll tell you why um uh, i don't agree with it but i am fascinated by it because If you own billion dollars like for example Tony Stark his personality before he became Iron Man was like fuck you I'm going to buy you I have the money why would I not buy you that's what a billionaire just fucking did you're not going to give him freedom of speech I am more richer wealthier successor and people like me more than the government uh, the government legit he is so wealthy he is known across the world he is freaking respected you think the wealthy people be like <coughs> let me think what the peasants are thinking oh the peasants don't like elon musk we're going to side with the- no 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 they're going to throw their money at elon elon has he is the definition of like success he like the bezos the uh, gigs like there he's forever in the legendary books forever even if twitter fails bro he's worth about 300 billion yeah he bought it for 44 billion okay that's like i i mean i don't think he's going to kill himself for losing 44 billion uh, like 30 35 percent. and second thing is he, he could write uh, it off forever he could write losses off forever Yeah, but you also have to understand is it him who's buying this or is it is oh, it him. Tesla buying this? No, it's him. It's him. It's not from Tesla. It's from his own pocket money. Cool. Because as you know, you see what Elon does. He has SpaceX separate. He has uh the tech the satellite tech Starlink separate. He has Tesla separate. Like he is separating everything. Like when you think Tesla, you think Elon. When you think uh, Starlink, you think Elon. SpaceX, Elon. Twitter, Elon. So you see, he's. So what he's doing is exactly what all these major uh, companies have been doing for a minute. Like Google acquiring. You're just acquiring. It's monopoly. Yes. He took away freedom of speech, but freedom of speech was taken away a long time ago. It's been no, no, no. <clears throat> I didn't say he took away freedom of speech. I'm saying that Twitter used to control who they want to. I know, feel like think. it was less. I feel like it was lesser. Like it was, Twitter was definitely way less regulated than Facebook and Instagram. Way no, more. No, I meant to say. I meant to say in terms of like uh, they would block people off or they would uh, disable their accounts or something like that, right? Oh yeah, yeah with Donald Trump. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know whoever. Whatever. Yeah, right wing extremes and shit. The point is that, yeah, but the point is that now this guy is like, okay, I I own that because I think it's a I don't know. I think it's kind of like I own um the new age freedom of speech. You know what I mean? I just feel like oh, he just wants to, I feel like he just wants to talk the most amount of shit and just make Twitter wild. I feel like he wants to make Twitter into a more mature Reddit. Mm. I feel like he's going to listen to the people both sides and like I, I he said it if you have hate 20% on both equal side of they hate me not to buy Twitter he goes that balances it out um uh, I expect like honestly this I'm not shocked I'm not surprised I'm not upset I'm not offended because this is what a billionaire should do you have the money fucking use it i don't want a billionaire are, to be like making big charity who are offended who bought who a lot a lot why, why do they care it's not like employees, uh, okay they basically feel like uh, he doesn't stand for a lot of things he's more like right way he's more of like you know some people Twitter say he's em- like employees i can understand that but Twitter employees other people like even Sean King that's another dude that's i don't know he's something else Sean okay. King you know who Sean King is right no 
Uh, he basically made a lot of noise when the whole uh, BLM uh, movement was happening. Um, and he pocketed a lot of money. He made he made himself into an icon. He made himself into somebody he should not have. Like he tried to make it about the movement, but it really sounded like it was more about him. He definitely made so much money. He like he uh, he made so much money. Especially even the BLM movement uh, uh, team that was part of it. They also made money. They have man. They have a freaking mansion and stuff. Like I don't. I, I feel like people's greed also picked into that movement but we're jumping off that uh like okay. uh it's just you know what elon was a he's a billionaire doing billionaire shit buying shit he wants now he could do and say whatever he wants i guess other people it's probably gonna become a shit show and but i like twitter and i got rid of all the social media like you know it's been over two years now and the best decision i mean i don't know do you know do you know why i did I think I think you said you were getting a lot of distraction and there was a lot of negativity being uh, shared and there was a lot of um, a lot of stress on you, right? And it, it became like um, I don't know, it's overwhelming. I guess that's what I'm. Saying. Yes, that's uh, honestly, bro. It, it it got to the point where I felt I really felt social media was egging me on to be more negative and negative and negative and like it kept on driving content that would upset me drive me like uh, and i'll say this okay and uh if anybody is offended you're clearly stupid uh i sympathize and empathize with every single person in this world uh if they're suffering Crisis happening in Syria, crisis happening in Yemen, crisis happening in Libya, crisis happening in Africa, crisis happening in the world, in Ukraine, whatever you want it. I ignore these videos and I do it for a reason. I've seen them too much. I've seen them too much and I don't have the energy and capacity to be sad and take care of everybody around me and feel for the world because I am powerless. I am powerless. To help them, I can only help what I have, which is the truth. I don't care how anybody takes it. I donate. I do charity. I, in a sense where I am always donating. I'm always doing that even for my kids' birthday, for random things. Me and my wife always donate. That's the best and most we can do. That is the truth of it all. Like, And when I was going on Facebook, when I was going on Instagram, first of all, Instagram is stupid because you're legit posting a fake image for the moment to get attention. You're legit. There's nothing to do anybody. Hey, look at my food. This is what I have for breakfast. Look at this beautiful filter I put on it. Or I was part of it. I was part of this thing. So I'm, 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 like, if I'm criticizing someone, I'm criticizing me. The duck lives, the freaking... Uh, the bikini pictures, the freaking uh, shirtless pictures, summer bod, all this inspiration shit. I was part of it all, bro. I was part of all this shit. You're just putting out fakeness because you're in that moment and people are going to like it. And then you basically stir for those likes. Oh, there's many people like this. or so Like mentally, you're like, oh, yo, what do I do next? And you see these influencers who sell themselves like legit sell themselves and everybody's like oh man blah and some make success some don't no a lot don't a lot a lot of them don't but i've i was trying too hard for people that don't matter and same with facebook i started to dislike the people i used to like like their agenda their view and i felt like facebook found a way to highlight those points and put it on your newsfeed or drive those notifications, even like close friends, best friends, whatever you want to call it. It was exhausting. I was exhausted. I felt trapped. I felt like, especially during the pandemic, I was already in a box and it was just making me more and more scared with the whole election, with the whole, there was too much news, like too much, too much, it's too much of anything is never good. It like, and it's just like noises from every direction and I felt trapped and I was just like, nope. And I remember October 14th, 2020, that's the day I stopped. I remember till this day. It's a very important, it's like giving up drugs. It felt like I was on drugs. I legit was addicted. I'm checking my phone all the time. I mean, I still do, but now I actually, 
check shit that actually matters. Like, a, like most of the time a check is like, you know, my emails, people I'm talking to, uh, my kiss stuff, like football shit, movies, whatever. It's not, I'm not like offended by any of this life. And truthfully speaking, Facebook is not any better. It's really not any better. You share things you find like, you know, offensive, likes, whatever. Who the fuck cares? Just keep it, honestly speaking, I have so many likes. You know it. I My mind is everywhere. I like 20,000 shit you probably don't even care for. I don't want you to just go there and like my picture but not understand. It's just like, it, it doesn't make any sense, right? It's just like, yeah, you're just browsing through. It's just at that point, it just becomes casual. And that, yo, what was that show on Netflix that was like lighting behind, uh, like I had the technology one? Do you remember it? No. Uh, Netflix. The sci fi shit. Netflix. Uh, they have a sci fi uh, genre. I mean, which one? Uh, it was. I mean, give me some context to it. Technology show. Uh, I'm trying to see technology. Black Mirror. Oh, I saw. Have a you couple, ever seen it? Couple Bro, of Black episodes. Mirror is one amazing show. You should watch yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It is the reason why I I've say this. A couple of episodes, but I would like to watch it from start. Season Season one was okay. Uh, last season was horrendous. Like I don't even talk about the last season. I felt like they legit pushed themselves to do too much. Uh, there are like there are few episodes that are just like wow. Like they really go into that deep dive of possibility in the future and uh, what technology the black in the bad in the in a bad hands could do. So like Black Mirror is a really really good show. Really like something that you just put on and just watch it and be like holy shit! I didn't, you didn't expect it to go there. Uh, so it's just like it's cool. It's a good show. Ugh. I'm gonna check it yeah. out. I uh, I saw one of them. I don't remember much about it, but I saw one of it, and I thought it was really interesting. But I remember this. I was introduced Black Mirror and Office at the same time. Office is yeah. the one with Steve Carell. For yeah. some reason, I chose to watch more of Office, and now I'm kind of like, okay, it's just. You know, after a while, it's kind of like, what happens now? You know, I, I, I don't yeah. get it. So. No, no, the other shows I recommend, if you like Office, uh, Parks and Rec. I saw Parks and Rec. I bought the first season. Now I have to find a place to watch it. I, I think it's on, it's on Peacock. Season. It's on Peacock. Uh, I don't have Peacock. I I'll, give, I'll, give, I'll, I'll send you my information after this. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'll show you that. So it's but, on Peacock. All of Office is on Peacock. Yeah, Office. I think Hulu might have it too. You know, I haven't checked. I'll check it. Hulu's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, as you know, I watch a lot more uh, Daisy-based content. So I watch uh, Hotstar through that as okay. their hub. Yeah. So, so yeah, that that kind of uh, that kind of helps. Okay. So the shows I recommend, Community is great. Community is hilarious. But uh, I feel like you need to be. Uh, community is a way better version, and I don't care what anybody says. A Big Bang Theory, because. I don't care. Big Bang Theory is not for me. I just it's I not my comedy. I know you do. It's not for me. But uh, another great show, Curb Your, Enthousi- uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, one of the funniest shows ever. Uh, Parks and Rec is amazing. Community is amazing. There, there's a new show that just came out, Abbott Elementary. The one I uh, like, hilarious. So good. So good. Uh, Modern Family. Uh, yeah, whatever, I'll text you. But I think Parks and Rec you'll enjoy the most is very office-like in a sense. And Leslie Nope is awesome. She's awesome. Who's that? Uh, uh, the main lady. For Parks and Rec? Yeah. Isn't, is that the same one who's a brother-sister duo? Yeah, they do it in, um, have you seen the movie um, Blades of Glory? Is that is that them? Yeah, yeah I think she's in it. I think she's in yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. She's in it. But all right, let's let's start on the movies, like movie topic. Uh, let's go. Okay, Spider-Man: No Way Home. You have not seen it. Not yet. Oh man, let me just tell you, you're in for a treat. It is. It, it is one of the best theater experiences I've ever had. Like the best. Like when I say theater experience, and this is why I love going to theaters, especially opening day, first show, because that's when the fans come. That's when the diehards, that's when the true people, the true believers of the movie are there. 
Like, but people that go Saturday, Sunday, they're escaping the crowd. They're escaping so they could just, you know, get good seats and wash in peace and blah, 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 bring the significant other. Like, that's when you go on date. Thursday, Friday is Saturday. Those Thursday night, Friday all day, Saturday afternoon to night. That's where the true fans are there. Like, you really have the experience. So, you we've been to it. Remember, we used to go like first and first show, like the 300 Transformers. You wait in line for hours. Like, that was the, awesome. The first three ones uh, I did with you, and I absolutely loved it. In fact, Harry I Potter. Not, we used to do Harry Potter. Uh, I didn't even know that they released. On, I am. I was always under the, you know, uh, under the thinking that they released on the weekends. But no, they released on a Thursday night. And I um, didn't know about this until you took me. And I remember, I think the first three Transformers, that's how we did them. Bro, I watched I I've watched all those movies and everything. Like that's something that I like I it was a like people can't understand why. And I, I like I don't expect them to. The hell why is this so this I think crazy. one of the times I had the weirdest times was once uh we were with a bunch of people. I don't know who they were, uh, but the, you brought these you, you were friends or I don't know, there was a bunch of people. And you decided to, uh, you decided to, we decided to go to a movie and we walked into Knocked Up. And it was the, a good movie. Yeah, but we walked in almost like mid or at the ending of it or something like that. I and, I know, and there was a scene where I wasn't too happy with it. So I was like, I think when she was giving it. birth, when she was giving birth, I walked out of the theater and you guys started laughing. And from there, we went to the Wicker Man. Like, I don't know why. Oh, that but was yeah. so Nicolas Cage. Yeah, Nicolas Cage. Yeah, bro. Yo, so. no, no. Movies have always been thrilling for me, bro. Going to movie theater, I fucking like. I live for it. it's exciting because it's two hours of me watching entertainment. That's what movies are. They yeah. are supposed to entertain. In world of, if you're gonna sit there for two hours and browse on social media and just like be nothing, spend two hours in a possibility that cannot be possible. Like Harry Potter is not possible. Mm. I, I just sit there and I watch it. Like honestly speaking, I'm home. I could. What am I gonna do at home? Uh, when I'm in my free time, I could be basically either spending time with the kids, and when we spend time, we just put this on in the background. We just put this on in the background, so something they can watch. But you kids do need that distraction. If you, I know every te- technique is different. I know you don't have kids, uh, and it's but the thing is like with um, everybody has different ways of doing it. I don't want to over stimulate my kids and also at the same time i don't want to over exhaust myself like the future is technology we live on a computer we're on computers right now we have we honestly we didn't grow up on this luxury that we have now they do and they're gonna have more so why why lessen it when inevitable like you know it's inevitable but harry potter bro one of the best theater experiences uh but as soon as Avengers started coming out, like Avengers Infinity Game, everybody in that theater cried. Like everybody oh, wow. in the theater was emotional. Everybody theater when you see the Infinity Game, right? Yeah, I've seen when, all. When when Thanos Thanos snapped, and you saw the people dying, you're like, yo, who's about to die? Then the T'Challa died. You're like, no way! Like legit, yo, Spider Man dying. Like honestly speaking, what people. I think my my it, it actually not only in terms of like the story or the content, but even the way this shot was done, the one with Hawk when he's teaching his daughter, you know, how to shoot the arrow. Yeah. And he looks somewhere else or something. He sees the ma- his wife and the child and everything like that. He looks back and things just vanish. And that scene was the most. That was Endgame. Uh, Endgame. Oh my bad. But but wait. You said Thanos snapped, right? Isn't that also but, in? But Hawkeye wasn't in uh, Infinity War. Oh, it, it ha- it's that's where it begins, right? That's where the story begins, right? Uh, well, if you're looking at the story, yes. Okay. Uh, well, no, no, it still doesn't begin. What where Hawkeye comes? He comes when the snap happens. He comes right. at the end of Infinity War, in a sense. Oh, okay, they, okay, I see. So remember when we were seeing? Uh, uh, let's see. Let's go here. Uh. Whatever, this sucks. <laughs> let's go jump back to here. <laughs> so, um, let's talk about Infinity War. And I really feel like it's one of the best movies of all time in, in any in a, forget superhero in general. Um, 
it basically the reason why you get a full experience you get all the highs all the lows and the movie is so engaging it doesn't give you a moment to breathe it starts out with thanos fucking up thor with fucking up hulk sending his you know freaking posse they're strong enough to fuck the avengers up like legit two of them who are beating the shit out of iron man doctor strange wong uh, Hulk, Spider-Man, well, Hulk wasn't doing shit. He was being, like, you know, saying no and he's afraid. Uh, Spider-Man, like, these guys were, like, legit. And they even stole Doctor Strange. Uh, and it was forever just keeping you on your toes, introducing everybody. Like, basically, instead of taking a sweet time, giving you, like, a flow of people coming, it was just, like, throwing them into shit situation and you're with them. And building this grand story, this final battle, nah, bro. And, you know, he was win. And we've been trained to see that heroes fucking win every single time. They lose. Yeah. They 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 lost. They yeah. lost. How is that not one of the greatest movies of all time? Like legit. Yeah, it, is. It, it basically it basically gives you all the thrill, the excitement, the powers, the emotions, the human feeling, the grand feeling. The bad guy comes and everybody going, now we're gonna fucking win. We're gonna fucking win. I mean all the comic book fans knew it. I knew it. I was expecting people to die. I just didn't know who was going to survive. But for you to pull it off so beautifully, like so beautifully done, and showing the carnage, the emotions, that like, nope, evil doesn't, like, you know, good doesn't always triumph. Evil does. And especially Dr. Strange says that out of so many million possibilities, there's only one to succeed. Yes, the next game they succeed. Spoiler alert! That one scenario happened, uh, but the po- the fact that you have so many million possibilities and this is one of them. And now think about all the possibilities that happened in the fourteen million or whatever did not succeed. Like this was the end for them. This is yeah. the possibilities for fourteen million versions, bro. Wow. That's so amazing. That is so amazing. Like, how can you like that's like the theater experience was epic. Epic. Then that end game, it carried over because everybody is like, nah, we in it, we in it. When everybody came on screen, the theater erupted. Wow. Hey, bro, it was like, yes, we're all together. We're fucking stupid. Let's fucking go. Like it was the whole energy, the the thrill, the passion of the entire crowd, every single person they felt it. I went with my Saad, Salman, Sadaf, my wife. Like, my wife is my Marvel ride or die. Like, there's any superhero movie, especially Marvel related, she's going to be there with me. I'm not, that's the only time I will not go first day first show because my wife is one of the not saying she's not a fan. She's one of those like, I can watch it in peace. I don't need to rush. Yeah. I uh, I will do that for love. <laughs> I, I will what, is, what is that one thing that you have started to do uh, in terms of movies or watched or something that she likes? Because well, I'm pretty sure she wasn't a big fan of Marvel as per se before you and her got together. So I, so. I feel like I have rubbed off on her a lot in terms of movies, shows, and like anime. I feel like shows we have here and there like... Uh, agreed on but so this is what we have done so we start some shows together or we recommend shows but we do not watch them together sure and i'll tell you why some shows we do some shows like if it's disney shows ah uh, we're watching it together like the marvel shows we're watching it together um like harry potter stuff we're watching it together anything like that not fantastic piece she didn't want to watch it. she don't care about that uh but with shows we since we have kids we cannot always watch them together and she yeah. watched next to binge it in her own way I like to watch it my own way. Sure. Uh, so we give that piece of comfort. But when it comes to like Marvel stuff, like she's always been about X Men. Remember, we used to go see X Men before with the Fox View. She's yeah, always yeah, been yeah. Because we all grew up. I feel like since we all grew up, especially like you know, we're gonna talk about Parkwood very soon. That's the next segment. We're gonna basically keep that more. Let us just like you know. Uh, so. We, we as in Parkwood, we all grew up around comics and stuff. The only they were on TVs, bro. There was Gargoyle, uh, X Men, uh, uh, Iron Man, Spider Man, Batman. Like then Batman Beyond came later. Gargoyle is like Mummies Alive, Power Rangers. We had we had action stuff, so that's all we had. So I'm pretty sure uh, they're driven to that too. 
and they used to watch like you know Smallville and everything, like Superman, Smallville. So they've grown up on that oh, kind okay, of. Okay, 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 yeah. So it's not like they're completely clueless about superheroes. No, no, no that's not what I meant. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah I, no. I was hoping for I was hoping for some kind of response from you where you were like, oh yeah, I started watching like uh, I don't know, like Bridget Jones or something like that. Nah, I still wouldn't do it. I still, I have, I've given it. I have watched. Wait, some wait, stories. Princess Diary. I, I, remember I, one, I love it. I love it. I'll admit I know, it. I love there was, it. There was a time where um, there was a time where something had happened, and you were like, "Oh, I really gotta go." I had promised uh, Hina and Anna. I don't know if it was Hina or Anna. It was both. And I was like, "Okay, fine. I'll go with you." <laughs> I come there, and legit, you're sitting in what the room is dark, and you're sitting and watching Princess Diary, and I'm like, "Yeah." And I'm movie. like, well, are, are, are we are we really doing this?" And you were like, "Yeah, we are." And I was like, "All okay, right." So listen, I'll tell you the truth. Okay, there was two parts. There was one. I was trying to get into my wife's pants, okay? <laughs> I've also, listen, there's two parts to the story, okay? One part of my wife's pants, I could admit it, I could say it, my wife, pants. I married that lady, yes. Uh, so, yeah, uh, there's one part, obviously, as a teen boy, oh, come on, man. And we were teenagers, of course. We were, we, sometimes we thought part with our dicks, sometimes we didn't. And this scenario is like a little bit there, a little bit not. So, uh, but, 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 movie was good, I won't lie. Uh, there's some shit that they have taken me to see, to see, that was god awful, like stupid shit, like is legit <laughs> dumb. Uh, like, what, like the Backstreet Boys concert? No, nah, nah, oh no, I I've been to, I've been to a Backstreet Boys concert. They're freaking amazing, bro. No matter, like honestly, speaking, I don't think I ever hated them. I grew up on Backstreet Boys, and I loved them because of Anna and Hannah. Because especially when I first saw my wife and how she reacted, it's still implanted in my head. Uh, till this day, like I remember when Backstreet Boys came out, her, Aruj, uh, and Hina all like jumped with excitement, and I was just like, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. I Idea, mean, yeah. Yeah. like a light bulb flower. Yeah, Backstreet Boys for life. Let's go. You uh, late? Oh, I, yeah. I used to love Backstreet Boys before too, because in India, that, that's the music that we had got. You know what I mean around that time. Yeah. But, but for you, I still remember there was a picture of you. Um, I remember too, New York. Outside the, yeah, outside yeah, the ABC think, Studios. No, TRL. Uh, I think TRL Studios. I don't know. But yeah, there was a picture of you. I saw that. Yeah, so, um, no, no. Th- that experience was hilarious. And I think because of me also, they got the experience too. It was, it, I, all the credit goes to them. All the credit goes yeah. to them. Uh, so it was me, uh, it was me, Ana, Hina, Sama, and I think Subui. Uh, and I go there, and I legit won't tell you. At that time, I'm single. Um, uh, me and my wife have nothing. Me and my wife didn't have anything until like years later, or later, or whatever. Uh, it's all girls. I go with girls. It's all girls, and they like take your shirt off. And I'm not in any form, okay? I'm just a, just a skinny like a uh, team bot, whatever. Average your whatever basketball thing. shorts. I still remember that. Yeah, yeah. So they like take your shirt off, and they with their lipstick or whatever they had, they wrote their the Backstreet Boys names and shit all over me. I was like, yo, fuck it. Any guy, any straight guy. That says they would not have done this. I feel sorry for you because I don't regret anything. Because now let's see why. Why I made four girls that I'm friends with happy. Why would I like you know? And something I was surrounded. Bro, I was surrounded by girls. <laughs> surrounded. Okay. And I'm the only guy. And I'm like, I right, either two things gonna be taken out of this. Either I'm gonna get a girl, or two they're gonna think I'm gay. That's the only two things that's gonna happen. But then when the thing happened, right, when uh, they were basically there, they come out, they, re- like, how it's shown, especially in TRL, is like, they come out in TRL, us outside, we can't see shit, because we're outside the building, legit, we're legit, this is so sad, it's sad, it sounds sad, but this is how fans are, especially to get up close and personal, or meet, or even see their people they love, especially, yeah, like, Turning Red, I don't know if you saw Turning Red? Yeah, I did. It's, it's basically that. It's so yeah. true. Except the concert part because it's much easier now than before. Um, almost everything is identical. Like your wife probably can ass- attest to that. I know my can because the whole time I kept on going, this is your mom. I kept on telling my girls, this is your mom. This is your mom. This is your mom. The whole time I'm like, this is your mom. Um, and I seen my wife in that thing. So, and 
as soon as so they basically come out, it's better to see on TV than it is, whatever. But we're there. And they go by the window and they look down and they see like, you know, fans and stuff around. And there were a lot of people. Actually, boys, yeah. uh, like a lot of people came out. Like holding streets signs, were blocked type of thing. Holding, yeah. holding signs, like just for fucking 10 seconds. And them waving. They're probably not going to even see anybody. They're probably just go cheer, whatever. But because of this idea they did, because of what they did to me, and because I'm so fucking tall compared to every single person that was there, uh, they waved and they looked at me and pointed and started laughing. And the girls went crazy. Like, Anna and everyone they started went crazy. Even I did. I was just like, yeah, let's fucking go. Like, but the thing is, we got that moment. We got, we got a moment better than a lot of other people get. Oh, yeah. Personally. So, and then we try to look for that moment and stuff online. I think it was like a small second. Like, I remember it was what? Uh, I think I didn't know had the, they had the cable TV. I think back in the day, it was like recording on like digital TV. It was like, oh, you have yeah. a digital box? A DVR? <laughs> what is this? What is this Timo shit? Uh, like, it, it, it's just those are that or that. Like, Bastion Boys, and then it, like, it just became special. And I mean, honestly speaking, it's a very huge part of my life. Sure. So massive, massive. I went to, I took my wife to the concert. Uh, oh my God, what a concert. It was so good. They legit know how to put on a show. Like they're really, really good. Especially all this fuck now, they're still good. And I like, when you think about it, when you re-listen the music, it's good. It is like, they're good. But no, uh, like Marvel experience, superhero experience, like shared everything. I went to go see No Way Home with Anna. Uh, bro, what an experience! What an experience, bro! This movie threw me over the roof, over the roof. Like I had expectations, like I had expectation of Infinity War. It delivered. I had expectation of Endgame. It delivered. I had expectation of No Way Home, not at Endgame level. Not at Infinity War level, like a little below, because I'm not. This is a Spider-Man movie. It's not like you know. I'm not gonna basically compare it to the greats. This is a Spider-Man movie, so I'm like, I had expectation, but bro, it delivered tenfolds, even more than I wanted. Like it was. It is the second best Spider-Man movie. In my in my books, it's the second best wow. Spider-Man movie. The first one is Spider-Verse. Into the Spider Verse. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a really good one. It took me some time to watch it, but when I watched it, I I didn't want to watch it in pieces because I thought it was a masterpiece. Uh, not just by the sense of animations, but also the story wise, and it was just really good. It was really, really contentful, you know, uh, animation and story, absolutely. It is something Sony. You know how much you like to represent Sony. Sony did beautiful. It yeah. is something Sony, hats off to them. Hats off to them because Spider-Verse till this day is the best Spider-Man and probably one of the best superhero movies. It was better. I had it better. I think it came out the same year as Infinity War or Endgame. And I had a better rank than it. I had it ranked higher because the experience, I went there by myself and I really had minimal experience because I was like, you know what, this animation one, I'll have okay because I love Spider Man. I grew up with Spider Man. He's one of my favorite superheroes. Sure. Spidey, I feel like he can relate to us because when Spider Man was there, he's in high school, discovers power. With that power, he's actually trying to save the world, be good. Me as a teen would try to pick up girls or try to get shit I want. Like, I would basically, it's a normal human thing. Like, anybody yeah. with Great, like the power, that, the, the line that Uncle Ben says, like Stanley, when great power comes great responsibility. I was a teen, you were a teen, we weren't responsible. <laughs> so, I don't, uh, like, it's really hard to question that, okay? Maybe we'll be good. I'm not saying we'll turn evil and fucking start killing people. Uh, but he's good of them good. He's like, he has that, you know. And that was the Spider-Verse blew me away like i'm sitting in theater by myself but i legit was in another world i was like i cannot believe what i'm watching i kept on saying that i cannot believe what i'm watching i it was beautiful top to bottom every layer every layer was masterful it was gorgeous animation fit perfectly story fit perfectly it was a perfect 
the perfect comic book movie. It felt like a comic book. Yeah. It looked like a comic book, but it felt like the most amazing. Like it had the effect. Like that's why I say this next movie, this one. Whoa! Look at the zoom quality of this shit. Better, right? Everything, everywhere, all at once has made me feel like Spider Verse, but more. Like I saw the trailer and I watched almost all eight, uh, like all like A twenty four movies. I really like them because A twenty four. Like, are you familiar with A twenty four? Should do? No. So they they like uh, they don't really care to make movies for like making money purposes. They like to make movies for movie purposes. So, like it has to mean something. Uh, they created like Parasite, Green Knight, and everything. And this one, everything everywhere now. It like I saw the trailer, and I love the uniqueness of weirdness. It's basically you could say it, it looks. It's basically like multiverse, and especially a movie that is playing on. I would say a very thin line because we live in a, a superhero driven lifestyle now like legit yeah. cinema experiences are equal to like superhero movies not every movie should be cinema movies pandemic ha- has made us realize that um like a lot like hbo max what they did during the pandemic i feel like they should still also do it a little bit like instead of uh uh having just people go to the theater they should also make people rent the movies at home at the same time because that will drive their prices you start making it like you know like what disney was doing like 30 dollars just charge it i was uh, i was okay to pay 30 dollars because i get to watch movies with my wife and kids at home i have yeah. no issue with it. uh they get to enjoy it at the same time and i get to watch movie and yeah and you get to own it like you legit are getting two in one it's a great strategy and i'm waiting for this movie i need to go see this movie again uh it <sighs> What an experience, bro. To like, it has to do with multiverse. And last, they already showed multiverse and possibilities in Endgame, Infinity War, in Spider Man, and the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness is coming out. To play on a superhero driven era of that company. And I think, honestly, because of this movie, Doctor Strange has a lot to do. Like, my expectation on Doctor Strange just went higher. Because. Oh, wow. This movie was breathtaking. Like, I did not want it to end. It's two hours and 20 minutes and uh, unbelievable. It's masterful. I need to go back and watch it again. It, like, if this movie didn't exist, I would have said Batman would be movie of the year. Oh, wow. Like, Batman was amazing. It's the perfect Batman movie. And Robert Pattinson, hats off to him. He you know, I had my reservations about it, but when I saw him, I was like, I was like, he's the perfect fit. Perfect. I was like, perfect. yeah, I was like, he's the perfect fit. So, uh, I, and I love that we no no longer need to go through the bullshit origin story. We know Bruce, uh, Martha and uh, Tom are dead. Fuck them. The dead, whatever. They created Batman. Let's go. Uh, this is year two. Like you know, after he takes the mantle, like you know, he's trying to get into it. Then I went to see Northman. This movie, bro. Okay, it was the perfect movie to get every taste out of my mouth. Like I need to like rinse it out of my mouth. This is like, and I love Viking shit. I love it because it's barbaric. It's the true era, and it makes you wonder because it also points out back in Greece and Greek mythology, they have different kind of gods. They had you know Zeus, Hera, and everybody like you know they have different gods in. Uh, Vikings, they have uh, Odin. Uh, they they believe in Valhalla. Uh, what it makes me think is like, yo, there's so many religions that came and went that nobody really like focuses on stuff. But, but but I love I love the this movie because it was barbaric as fuck. It was like the whole it felt like Spartacus of Vikings, and it it was Hamlet. Like I was saying right at the uh, like right at the start is Hamlet. It is the Vikings Hamlet, and it was so good, so good. Like I honestly speaking, it's like I don't know. It is good. It, it, it's just a, it's a different movie. It's art. It's not something that you need to see in theater. I saw it in theater because I love seeing it in theater, and I really love seeing this in theater. It's really good. Uh, I saw this like you know just for the hell of it. Uh, the biggest takeaway 
movie is okay at best, okay? I really had low, low expectation of this. It was better than that. Uh, but this dude right here, Grindelwald, right here. He got replaced because of the whole Johnny Depp and Amber Heard situation. You know about that? Yeah. So, Johnny Depp was originally Grindelwald. Oh. He got replaced because of the whole controversy. Stupid shit and Warner Brothers has ever done. One... Cancel, try to cancel J.K. Rowling, who created all this shit, the biggest money maker, fucking idiot. And second, replace Johnny Depp with him. First of all, Amber Heard is a piece of shit, fuck her. Uh, and long live Johnny Depp. I'm not gonna protest and not go see a movie just cause he's not in there, whatever. But if he was in this, this movie would have been amazing. Cause this guy sucks. Like this guy sucks. Like sucks. Okay. Uh, He's great. Jude Law. Holy shit. Does Dumbledore flex? Like, he legit flex. Like, wow. like you want to see Dumbledore whoop some ass? Oh, you see Dumbledore whoop ass. Okay, so Jude Law. Amazing. Amazing Jude Law. But this movie, I would give it... Okay, if I have to rate, I would rate 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 11, 11 out of 10. 8 out of 10. 6 out of 10. Oh, bad guys! I saw uh, this is a new cartoon movie that came out the this over the weekend. Yeah, I've seen the trailer. I've seen the yeah, trailer. Yeah, interesting. It came out, yeah. So I went to with the girls to see it. They really liked it. They really oh, enjoyed it. I wasn't. I couldn't understand if it was okay for children to watch because I felt that it had a little bit of a edge to, I guess, uh, raspiness. I guess you can say or something in terms of. Uh, I I wasn't sure if this is a, a eighteen plus movie or something like that. First of all, let me just say something, okay? Uh, now, the word bitch is no longer a curse word. It's said oh, over really? Radio. No, it's said over TVs, it's said over radio, and it's okay to say. My kids have watched PG-13 and PG-14 content, and I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I know when I'm letting them watch, I am there watching it with them. It's not like I'm letting them watch, like, blindly. They watch Avengers, they have watched every single Marvel movie, they watch every single Harry Potter movie. Like, they're gonna watch this. My kids, no, I watch anime and shit. My youngest one watches anime, she watches Naruto. They know about reality. I'm not gonna sugarcane it, but I'm also not gonna make them watch gore and shit at the same time. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. That, that guy says nothing. It shows, like, you know, human nature, like Zootopia okay. and shit. Like, it's honestly bad guys is like their version of Zootopia. Okay, I see what you mean. Zootopia is better. This yeah. ain't that bad, but uh, like Zootopia is definitely better. You know, it was a good movie. I give this uh, like 7 out of 10. My daughters sure. will probably give it 10 out of 10. Because any movie they like, they like the rated. This movie, Sonic 2, so good. Ah, like Sonic 1 was good. This is better. And, and you you need to stay for the post credit. It's. I love Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey is one of the most precious actors and one of the yeah. biggest icons we could ever have. I uh, agree. Knuckles is one of my favorite characters, especially in video game. Um, it was such a good movie. I, all I'm gonna say is such a good movie. You're gonna really like it. Uncharted, I've seen, I've seen them both. Okay, uh, Uncharted. Uh, I have to watch this one. He surprised me. Tom Holland. He surprised me. She was good. She was probably the best part of the whole movie. She is like his love interest. Uh, it's really not that hard. Is anytime Wait, is you that see that Antonio Banderas. Yeah, he's in it. Oh man, this is a big star, guys. Okay. Now, yeah, Antonio Banderas is not as big as he used to be. Okay. Like, like you have to think about it. Back in the day, we really didn't have much vision. We didn't really have. We, Mass of Zorro is another creator of like the old old remake. He just did it better. It's just like it's just like Max of Zorro was their Batman back in the day. After a while, there's no one like Antonio Banderas. He's still a legend. But he's not considered. He's not gonna bring people to a theater anymore. Uh, like he will, he will. Yeah, nobody's really going for him. Like they just, it's just gonna be like, oh man, Antonio Banderas isn't there. Hey, you know what? That's pretty cool. Hey, like he's pretty cool. So that's that's all you're gonna get. Or originally, it used to be like, yo, massive Zor Zoro's in this. Yeah, let's go watch Zoro. So it's just like, Mark Wahlberg was Mark Wahlberg. I would give this movie like a six point five. Okay. At best, like at best, and uh, yo, I know you you didn't watch this yet, bro. Yeah, I haven't watched this one yet. And it was dope. This was dope. 
And then I want to know what did you think about season one? I know you just got into anime. I I, mean, I can't wait to hear about it. Go. So Attack on Titan. First of all, it took me a while to really um, get on with it. I think you had. I think it took a couple of years, if I'm not wrong. You have been asking me to watch this. Yeah. And then finally, I was like, okay, I'll start watching it. And it still took me some time. But after I watched the first two episodes, I was kind of hooked. It, more than hooked. I think I was left with a lot of questions, and I started to excuse me ask you and you had one response like just keep watching just keep watching so i'm i i just seen the first season uh they don't have the other seasons on netflix yet if i'm not wrong um but now i really want to know what happened how it happened um what these beings really are but a great show absolutely a great show yo shri you're in for a treat bro you are legit in for a treat because it gets better and like oh, it, 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 it's just just i uh, just think that you don't know the answers yet and you're okay with it because it'll take time but it's worth it it's worth the wait uh let's skip through these really quickly well what okay there you go uh multi madness yeah after everything everywhere this has huge expectation avatar 2 it better be good as avatar 1 right, yo, we saw avatar 1 together remember we were high as shit we went to uh regals in south playfield Sounds about like it. Okay, no, you know what? Um, I don't I think, think we saw like I, 3D too. We saw like, yeah, see, yeah, and I you had a headache. Watch, I think you got a headache. Yeah, my I, guy, I yeah. didn't watch 80% of the movie, and that's the whole reason I went and got rid of my glasses the LASIK or whatever PCR thing, or I don't know what it's called, but the LASIK thing, bro. Avatar is basically uh, better Pocahontas, yeah, you know, um. Even without the 3D, the movie was still amazing. Oh, so good for this time, James Cameron, genius. Yeah, I can't wait for part two, part three, part four, part five, part ten. Uh, part ten. Well, he, I think he's doing up to part five. I don't know what the fuck, but really, okay. I know two and three, two is coming out this year. Three is already in works or something. This, uh, I love Jurassic Park. I think Chris Pratt is amazing. She is a good direct. She's a good director, yo. Uh, the Ron Howard family, the Fire Howard family, they're really good. The, the goats are back for the original Jurassic Park movies. I like that. Uh, so it's good. They basically try to... And also, you rather take advantage with the new with the old. You need to do that. Oh, yes, yes, something. absolutely. It it actually... Uh, milk it. it yeah. Milk it, milk it. Thor, bro, Ragnarok was amazing. He, I have a man crush on him. He's a <laughs> one beautiful man. Beautiful. Yeah. Look for me, gorgeous. it was uh, extradition. Yeah, no, yo, uh, yeah, extraction. Extraction. extraction my bad Ooh. yeah extraction yeah, absolutely extraction was amazing but no, i love it guardians are here uh, natalie portman she's going to be mighty thor uh Valkyrie, the new king he's amazing so look i'm very excited for this movie uh huge expectation but i think they're going to deliver it uh especially they have the same director from uh ragnarok he's amazing mm. and free guy minions rise of group come on <laughs> come on banana let's go i've been waiting this one I'm ex- yo, this oh, one, yeah. yeah. Lightyear? Yeah, Lightyear, I'm, I'm waiting for this. This looks good. But, okay. Uh, animes, I'm looking forward to. Uh, they're getting animated Chainsaw Man. Man. Uh, it's getting animated by my favorite uh, studios, or one of the best, MAPPA. MAPPA Studios, they do Attack. They actually do Attack on Titan later. Uh, right now, Wit Studios is doing it, but MAPPA is great. Like, you'll see the animation quality when it changes. Uh, Bleach, one of... The best animes if you didn't have fillers and they get caught, get caught. It's coming back. I uh, cannot wait. He's one of the best protagonists. Uh, made Anna watch it too. Oh, my wife is so huge into anime now. This is my wife's favorite anime and it is beautiful. Like, you need to watch it. What is it you, called? Uh, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer, okay. I, I think if, if you were, it's a quick two seasons. It's quick two seasons in a movie. I think in like. <sighs> I would say 35 episodes. Would you say uh, Swat Cats was an anime style uh, cartoon or no? No. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. People, when they think about anime and cartoon, that's a huge difference. In cartoon, they're now supposed to have a relevant story. They're now supposed to have a relevant point. This is one agenda for the episode. Uh, some, some have a story and pattern, uh, but they play on a very they have one tone they only have one tone that is driven from them they have the one agenda but but anime is a whole 
experience of storytelling and animation plays in part there you like you when you see anime then they'll put a huge amount of detail and money and budget into like sub area compared to other and depending on the depth the beauty and whatever you want to call it but they're with cartoon they color and they basically create the person around it but not that much detail to the background in animation you see details to the water droplets to like they want you to feel it like you they want you like watch you while you're actually watching live action movies or live movie shows they want you to feel the similar or better experience and the storytelling anime once you accept the world it is endless possibilities you basically open up to endless areas of Things. The weirdness is accepted. The growth is accepted. The randomness is accepted. The magic, the fictional, the everything is accepted. It's allowed because this is the world that is okay in. Uh, things, things that have that I have against anime, but I'm so like I just I'm so like I just block it off. Japanese creators love having massive tits for females. You won't notice in Attack on Titan. You notice in Demon Slayer. You notice it, it's it's very, very. Ninety percent of the animes, females will have huge tits, huge tits. You're on mute. Is it uh, is it just something uh, that they look for? Is it a part of the culture or what? Like, I mean, I understand where you come from, but if you look at certain Latin cultures or certain Brazilian cultures, the the women dress a little more uh, provocatively. You know what I mean? If you Boy. will and. I, I don't know about that. I don't know Here's about that. Morty. I'm telling you. You know why? Hentai. I don't know what that means. Hentai is anime porn. Oh, okay. No, I'm, I'm. what I mean to say is I, I get that. But if I'm not wrong, is that also something related to the Japanese uh, population that which it needs to be incru- increased and they're trying to indirectly promote it because South Korea South Korea has been doing that there's a problem with their with their population and they feel that after a certain time they they won't have enough South pure South Koreans so now they're they're promoting uh, you know that people to have more South Korean babies what does that have to do with the tits again going back <laughs> to the whole- Good question. Maybe, maybe I'll. I'll (laughs) What do tits have to do with human race? Aye, aye, aye. What does size of the what what are the size of the tits have to do with the thing? Okay, let's just tell you. It could be A cup, D cups. Doesn't fucking matter. They, (laughs) for example, love double D. They like when I'm saying big boobs. That's not normal. And and if you ever hear a female talk. Especially that have big breasts, they say that they suffer from the back pains. Yeah, they like it's basically uh, uh, they have weight on it, right? Imagine carrying yeah, yeah, yeah. five. Imagine carrying five pounds, pa- five pounds, whatever. Let's just say, even carrying five pounds more than your body weight can handle hurts your body. Like, sure. it, like so, I can I can't even imagine that. Whereas men or whatever, like ooh, boobs, uh, but that's exactly it. That brings interest. But I am like. Um, I don't even look or care for it, but there's, there's something in harm. Uh, harm is very, very popular in the uh, anime. It's like the main guy character must get every single girl to be in love with him. Like what they all called? want ha- harm. Harm. H a r e m. Yeah, let's pull it up. Uh, Where do you find all this stuff, man? Bro, you gotta educate yourself, bro. Yeah, let's share. I've been- Reading the wrong information for all these years. Haram. Uh, not haram. The fuck is this? Haram this is haram, anime. Bro. Haram anime right here. Uh, what is that? It's a kind of story in Japanese anime manga with a male character surrounded and loved by many females. Yeah, basically you get all the pussy. It's like it's basically kuchujo tai, but Japanese version. I get it. It's okay. No, not even Kuchuha, bro. It's like, first of all, Kuchuha, there's two females, okay? The two best friends. Possibility of that happening is very high. It has happened uh, in many, many situations of people. And that's actually how Indian dramas are. If you ever notice Indian dramas, especially, it's, uh, love either cousins, love, it's either cousins or sisters or best friends. It's always that. It's never anything else. It's like, oh my God, my cousin likes him. I'm going to love him more. 
I'm gonna marry him and piss her off with the whole or sister. Yeah, that's what dramas are. Like a lot of dramas are basically that, and they sit there watching. Like, oh my god, yeah, oh god, bitch! Every single fucking show is the same. I hate Indian dramas. I would like to say something about that. Um, it might be a little bit of a side note. There be times I would be like, "Yo, Shri, can you come pick me up?" Uh, this is when we used to live in Parkwood, as we say. You know, I would come pick you up, and you make me wait outside for God knows how many hours, right? If you if it's more than about ten minutes, I know it's caught, or you're <laughs> you're in the bathroom. If it's like se- five to seven minutes, you come in the car. I ask you why'd you be late, you wouldn't respond. But for any reason, one of our other friends we would go pick him up from London Terrace. And if he gets in the car, and if he mentions something about, like, oh, you know, this happened in this show, right away you would start blabbering. And I'm like, I'm like, you guys watch this show, and you're like, you don't understand, Shri. They're like so serious. My mom watches them all the time, and I'm watching this, and I'm like, I'm like, I, I watched the judge. Whatever it is, you used to watch them, and it it was a shock to me, and it was a shock to. You that the other friend that we had uh, also used to watch it. You were like, "Oh my god, you watch it too?" He's like, "Yeah, I watch it with my mom." And I'm like, "I'm picking up these idiots, you know." And they're sitting in my car with aimlessly, you know. But well, yeah, DC dramas, bro. I'll tell you something: it's the worst cinema or worst show experience. Like I sit there and judge, and I'm like, "Holy shit, bro! You're legit seeing maybe five minutes of content." Shot yeah. in seven different angles for yes. thirty minutes. Yes, I can't. I don't have that kind of patience. And then it, it goes. It goes three angles. Then the fourth angle comes with the thunder. Yeah. The fifth and angle top, comes bottom, with the... <laughs> like fucking like legit. It, it, it's just so stupid. It's so stupid, and it's always the same shit. And how the story changes. It is so epic. It's so good. And randomly, the person's walking, car hits them, some life tragedy happens, they lose their memory, they end up in another area. Oh my god, my god, hey. Love story begins again. Uh, the other person comes, how are we gonna get and make him disappear? Or it's almost like vengeance. Oh, it's just like, cool. bro, and people love that. And yo, it's so funny how our mothers and like uh, females and stuff, they believe, uh, believe that this is how the sauce is gonna be. Oh, this is the situation because they're like, oh my god, so evil. <gasps> She's so evil. She's making her do housework. <gasps> oh no. Like, it, it just, bro, it's just like, you know, it's, it's reality in India. What the fuck are you doing? Look, look behind you, bro. What the fuck are you doing? You're watching show while you're both doing that shit. <laughs> it's funny. My nanny used to watch some of these shows, right? And uh, you're in Bombay, right? So it, it you're bound to bump into one or the other celebrities here and there. It's a daily thing, you know? It's, yeah. It's like living close by to, you know, like uh, Los Angeles. You're going to bump into one or the other celebrities one or the other day. So many a times uh, it would be a vamp or a character like or a bad sauce or something, you know. And let's say we all have gone out. We're eating like street food and all of a sudden you see this actress or whatever that come up who plays the vamp or something. And my nanny is a big, you know, uh, was a big uh, fan of this. And I'll be like, nanny, look, it's that other actress or something from your show. And she'd be like, oh, she's horrible. You have no (laughs) idea what she does to her bow. And this, I was like, that's just a character. She's like, no, don't even talk to her. Don't even look at her. And I'm like, I'm like, but that's what exactly what you're saying. Of course, my nanny knows that this is a, this is a shooting. This is all happens. But the way it's it's embedded into them that they just don't want to deal anything with that person, you know. Yeah. It's just... that was now like I don't know. <laughs> you, you used to wrestle? No, no, no. I mean, oh. you know, for, for the fun of it, I'm talking about watching wrestling, bro. When I used to watch WWF? wrestling, yeah, WWF, WWE, uh, NWO. Like it's basically back in the day, there was like so much wrestling content. I used to believe wrestling was real, but then yeah, yeah. it slowly grounded it. Wait, but I think the, I, I think I still have my doubts about it though. It's staged. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, that. people do get hurt, but they sure. get hurt in limited capacity, and if they die, they get wealthy. Uh, for, for that matter, UFC must have been such a good, uh, you know, UFC's like, good. Uh, what's the right word? It must have been such a good uh, relief as you grow older. Be like, okay, there is something that is real. Uh, oh, well, yeah, boxing. You always have boxing. Right, but it's still not the same. But we also had professional wrestling in the Olympics. Again, it's still not the same. It, oh, what I meant to say, drama, the style, the drama. Yeah, not yeah. the drama. It's also the style of fighting, right? Because 
it, it, UFC is more MMA. Where boxing is just one type, or yeah. wrestling is just one type. Karate is just one type. Over here, you wrestling, yeah, yeah. No, but wrestling was a drama, bro. It was like, what's yeah, going yeah, yeah. like, on? Oh, the rock bottom, the rock bottom. One, two. Oh, he kicked out. Oh no, here comes Undertaker, choke slam. Like, yo, yeah, like it was the whole feeling of chaos um like it used to just, it was just chaotic it's like watching football but like with dummies like that's the best yeah. way of saying it yeah uh it was all stage did you, huh? did you play the wwf cards bro i used to play the games i was obsessed with w everything i was obsessed when i tell you power rangers and that shit i used to be obsessed with superheroes like i never did power I, rangers i did uh yeah. captain hero and all of that but not power captain rangers. planet yeah, captain planet Captain Captain Planet. Planet. Yeah, it's yeah, Captain Planet. Camera has a shit, yeah. That was that, that was something I used to get those rings too. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna save the planet. Fuck that. I am just fucking. Uh, I'm fucking used to see Kamehameha. I'm like, yo, I would love to fucking do that shit. Uh, but no, uh, yeah, like the uh, those when well, growing up, we had good content, we had good shows. Yeah. We just don't have that low shit quality. right now. But good, huh? good content, low quality, yeah. Yeah, I, I know, but parkour, yo, parkour is a big difference. That basically, that's our, that's where we all started. That's our bread and butter. In a sense, yeah. that's a foundation. That is something, uh, the root of all our success. I would and say, in a sense, I, I, I mean, I, I look at it in more of a success uh, than a failure because we still have that bond. We still have that community. We still like, even though we don't have the communication equally with everybody, we legit don't. And I feel like it's on everyone, but we all don't really have the energy we used to have or the freedom or we were blind. We were honestly we were blind in a lot of scenarios and i felt like being us together we protected each other from going in a very harmful way at the yeah. same time we also explored whoever wanted to explore explore and coming back to parkour was like home base yeah like coming back home uh to parkour felt the normal like no matter where we come back we come back here we are we the people that are around us they support us they understand us they are part of us like Let's name, like Rajesh was one of them. Like he is yeah. not a part of our clique, but he's Parkwood Parkwood. He has his own side. But like the key members of Parkwood, we had like you know, we have my wife, we have you, we have Hina, we have Kitty, we have Gurdia, we have Ali, uh, Maryam, Sahar, Sonam. Uh, we also had Satan for a while. Uh, we had Fahad, we had Saad Mughal. Yo, we had a mess. We have people from London Terrace. Uh, <laughs> Whoever used to come, we were very accepting. We were very open. We have people like you know our powerful group manifested, grew with the old bridge group. We like we created our own community. We created our own like friendship. We created our own like little world. We were we were protected. We were nurtured. We honestly speaking, I felt and I feel till this day. Who I am, what I am, where I am is all thanks to the way I was nurtured and the way I was treated and the way I was raised with everybody around me, by everybody around me. My friends, my Parkwood friends have had the most impact. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. I mean, um, it, it is a life journey. I wouldn't call it successful or not successful or any of that. Of course, it's oh, like yeah, not right nice. here. But yeah. yeah, it was definitely a, a very, very, uh, it's a long journey. Uh, it, most of our life uh, where we understand things and at the same time don't understand things and trying to learn things in terms of life lessons, I'm very, very fortunate to do it together as a group because, uh, of course, I came from India. You had come from Perth Amboy, if I'm not wrong, right? Yeah, I came from Amboy, yeah. Right now, did you move with anybody else to Perth? No. Perth so Perth? how it happened is in two thousand nineteen ninety eight, uh, when we were in Amboy, uh, my dad used to work at Quick Check in in uh, the one right here in uh, uh, like in Serval. So he used to work there, and he met Wasim Uncle, and 
Wasim Uncle, became friends with him, helped him, you know, do the, like, shout out to all of them. Shout out to Wasim Uncle for getting my dad uh, the, the TLC job and everything and setting him up so I got to be here. Because nice. my life in Perth Amboy, I was already arrested once. I was already in community service day once. Um, one of my friends got shot in front of me. It was like gang related. So my life in Perth Amboy was the hood. MS-13 was very big. Land Kings were very big over there. It was like... It was the ghetto at that time. When I lived in Perth Amboy, it was like almost considered ghetto. And I was the only brown kid in the whole class. Everybody was Spanish. And they will try to make me fight this other white kid named Miguel. It's weird. His name is Miguel, but he's white. Whatever. Uh, yeah, and it's the biggest. It's like, let's go to Amboy and name our kid Miguel, but he's white. Like, why can't he just be Michael? Let's make it easier. Uh, so yeah, so Perth Amboy was different. So when in '98, uh, we went to this party. You know when there, but I remember my wife and I Aruch vividly, vividly because that was the highlight of my life. Uh, at, that, at that time, at that point, and it shaped that moment. What year was this? Let's 98. talk about this. 1998. August 98. Wow. That moment changed my life forever. But then it was in the in the journey. So I met her and like, and I remember her reaction. And I remember I was staring at her. Oh, give my wife. I'm gonna fucking. I can talk shit as much as I want. Yes, my pre teen or teen self was staring at my teen wife whatever fuck you all um beautiful beautiful whatever um the year later we had another party at wasim uncles that was in parkwood uh at his place so we went there that's when i met ali i met um a few oh, other I, I met Hakan, I met Gurya. I met I met uh, like you know other members of our parkwood group but i met them there and this is 99 this is while before we moved and I, I clicked off right off the back with Ali, same age kid. I, I didn't have anybody, a brown kid to like. Yeah. Honestly speaking, until that day, like my, I have had the most least amount of brown friends. It's when I say it's Indian or Pakistani, whatever. Because when I lived in Saudi Arabia, I barely have some interaction. Then I went to boarding school. That really doesn't count. I really didn't make friends. Uh, even in public school in Nalanda, I have one friend that lived near me, but uh, another story I'll tell you about Sachin. I connected with him twenty something years later on Facebook. Oh wow! He connected with me. He he is like, yo, do you remember me? I remember your mom. I was like, how could I forget? He was like one of my first f- true friends. Wow. Um, so yeah, so I met Ali, and it was like connecting. We clicked back and back. We had all the similarities. I think we also like Pokemon at the same time. Uh, and then we were like wrestling every single person there. We were the biggest kids, so we were wrestling everybody. Me and Ali team weight again, everyone. We were fighting everybody in Wasim Uncle's basement. First time I ever met kids being kids, rowdy kids just being stupid in the basement while the parents uh, have like their kitty party upstairs. Um, like he sh- he took me to his house, like it was right there. He t- walked me there, he like, yo, you know, uh, this is where I, uh, this is my apartment, this is where I stay, this, that, blah, blah. Never met him again after that. And then my dad's like, we're moving to Parkwood. This is like June or July of 2000, whatever. And we moved there. And as soon as we moved there, I remember where Ali lived. I walked, as soon as we moved there. uh, And you know what's crazy, man? Our parents are so carefree that they will just leave their kids in a random apartment place, in a random compound. They have no idea. They just found it because cheap for the whole night and just go. Like, it was me and Saad protecting we, my parents fucking left two kids to protect beds what the fuck like wait 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 you got to explain this hold on, hold on. what so, exactly so, so, happened so 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 this is the this is the parent logic especially and I, i'm pretty sure every single parent old school parent does the same but thinks the same okay so and this is why they don't have so much education they're, 14, they're so 15 years old they're 14 years old probably yeah i think i'm 14 and saw this 11 yeah. Okay. Regardless of anything, you basically my parents' intention were to keep my two boys uh, in this place so they can look at her. Like we're basically bodyguards for everything else. Who knows if they come kill us? As long as we're protecting them, whatever. We were there protecting for the whole night. So the next morning, me and Saad, we walk up to Ali's place because I remember I have a great I have a great memory when it comes to direction. I can remember. Like in one shot, anywhere I go, I know how to get there. If I if it's that direction I go, I can always find it. 
I would like to I would like to interject there, and that is very very true for years. I did not have a GPS, but the only way I could get around is actually because of you. Uh, and it, it's 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 not just a compliment; it's a it's a legit fact. Like you are so good with directions, and I'm horrible at them. You know yeah, I mean? that's, so that's why we all work together. Work. That's why yeah. we work together. No, so yeah. I walked to Ali's house. I opened the door. And I basically, he's actually surprised. I think he recalled me, but he was to show what my name is because we met a okay, summer yeah. ago, and I remember him as Ali and stuff. And I was very excited because this is the first kid I actually got to bond with, first、uh, person I got to like interact with. And then he's like, "Yeah, I remember you,、uh, blah blah that this that." And I'm like, "Yeah, I live at 12A and stuff." He's like, "Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool."、Um, and then me and Sal walked home. And the next day he came, and I think my dad was outside. Then he's like, you know, Ali's here and stuff. And he's like, oh, what's up? I want to go for a walk. And then me and him just walked, and we kept on walking. I think we went by like all the way to like Pathmark something or、oh, Marshalls. We just kept on walking, and he's just telling me just sharing stories. And we got along like this right off the bat. Like、yeah. our friendship started from day one. Like I met him, and I was like instantly knew we're gonna be friends forever, and we're still friends forever. Like、yeah. that's one of the things. That's why Parkwood's so precious for both you and I. Yeah, we're still friends forever. Like that's the thing about Parkwood. Like the people we have, there's certain people you meet, and then there's certain people you beat, and that's、yeah. Parkwood. No matter what, I know I can share the deepest, darkest, stupidest secret with them, and they've been through the same pain, same suffering, same emotion, same. We've been together. We don't. We don't judge. We judge in the most stupidest way, but we don't judge. We only want. Pureness, purity. We we know each other's deepest dark secrets. We know、yeah. each other's、uh, growth. How we all looked at our worst, at our best. We you know each other's how we've been at our best. How we've been at the worst. We treated each other like that.、Uh, we know our parents, our families, our families' families, our、yeah. brothers, siblings. We know every single thing, every、yeah. single thing, to the point where if one of them is suffering, we suffer. Like、yeah. that's how closely we link. Any major change happens in our lives, we let them know. Yes,、yeah. equally share. That's like the bond, the feeling we have. So then Ali came. We walked for hours. He introduced me to Fahad, and then the thing that changed my life forever. My wife lived <laughs> one building across from me. One building across from me. Twelve A, eleven A. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so it's like it's like you know everything is connecting. Whatever, it it was just like that got to be on the head. I was like, yeah, let's go. I got to be like you know, and Sonam also came then recently. Sonam was also new.、Uh, Asma、oh, was moving out. Sonam, Asma, I don't know who that is. Yeah,、uh, she moved out before you came. She was also part of the crew. Okay. okay.、Um, Sonam, I Sonam came from Brooklyn. If I'm not yes,、wrong. yeah, I think、so、she did. Ali and them. They came before, before. Yeah, we, yeah, they were. Yeah,、uh, yeah. Met everybody there. Met like you know, met Mariam,、uh, Mariam Sabro,、uh, Seher. They were all still living across like, to a point where we knew everybody's buildings. We knew everything,、uh, where everybody lived.、Uh, I remember meeting Sonam,、um, this little auntie-looking chick with the biggest, biggest freaking glasses in the world.、Yeah. Holy shit! She had my grandma's glasses on, all right. <laughs> she literally had my girl. She had her freaking her glass of water in 3D. She's gonna get,、um, get a kick out of it. Yeah, bro. I remember that. Like, no, no, legit, yo. Sonam, like, we all look like fresh off the boat. But, like, legit. Like, it was great. But like, uh, we all seen our us, like, you know, our worst things and stuff. Like, and we used to have parties and everything. We, it's I don't know, like. Wait, we so all... now I'm trying to think. If you moved in 2000, I moved in 2001. I thought you guys had been living there for like six, seven years or plus. It, it, yeah, it felt like that, right? Because it, the thing is, oh that... man, I'm just finding this out now. This is this is shocking. Wow. Yeah,、uh, but but it, it, it's it it was just that we like because Ali had Kitty and Guria. Guria was friends with Sonam and Mariam. They were same age. Yeah. Uh, Kitty was friends with Anna and Hina,、uh, yeah. with the same time with Uru and stuff. Ali was friends with Fahad and all the guys and stuff. So we all basically had different areas. It's the main thing. The two main households that impact us the most is、uh, the Ali household and then the Sir household. Yeah.、Um, Ali household because the girls and Ali,、uh, yeah, they all be 
had friendship. Well, Ali, and, yeah, at least from the guy side, yeah. And then also Mr. House because I, me and them were completely fine because we're always, and, yeah. and we used to always chill at their place. That was our yeah. hangout spot. We used yeah. to go there, like whatever. It was our spot to be at. Um, and that crew, and then the we used to most of us used to see each other. Like you know, even even though we didn't have, I don't think any of us usually had many class. We I think you and me had a class together. Uh, I think me and Hina had that class was, together. That was years later. That was in a final year. If me, yeah. you, and Ali, you and Ali had a class together. Or science. Yeah, we had but the stories like, from that class too. But we'll, but we'll get to like, that later. This, that, we, we legit had no like interaction in terms of school. No, we didn't. Other. It's just the but fact that we lived in apartments next to each other. We had that community. And the fact that our parents were all from the same working class. All our parents were from yeah. the same working class and that we hung out together. We all picked our own group. For some reason, it felt all into place. Who we hang yeah. out with, what we hang out with, what we talk, walk together. Like when the bus, when, the bus ride, we know who to sit with, uh, who yeah. to talk with. Like, what do you do during the day? You do it in the day. When it's like, and you know who your people are. Uh, and it just felt like that. You just knew who your people are and like who you would invite to your birthday party. It just like when we were with us, we found our friends and everybody else were extensions. Yeah. Like we found our core family member. And honestly speaking, that made me realize more at your wedding. At your wedding. Oh, really? Because at your wedding, the entire Parkwood core came out. The people that really like, you know, the people that you're close with, the people that have been the foundation to you. Kitty, Gurdia, Sonam, Anna, Hena, Ali, Fahad, we we were there. San Mughal, we were there. Like yeah. Usam, uh, we were there. The people that like part of it, even the small extensions, everything, the people there, the core, the members, we travel. Like the thing is, and none of us, like Amy was there, San was there. Those are extensions. But the thing is, ride or die, day one. Wait, like the funny thing is, the whole time until like even after my wedding i realized i thought i was always an extension does that make no. sense Never well extension. i did not know that well, you know over the time you guys i always thought i was the extension so no, even when it came you, to uh, you know giving information or something i thought people just wouldn't care you know what i mean it, it, it was you were like a hall pass you were a hall pass what's a hall pass so i'll give it not for like okay i'll tell you you are will always be a core member of the the whole thing mm-hmm. the core member what i mean is hall pass is for all the girls you were the perfect guy to present in front of the parents ah well that i did a very good job of and i, I think i'm proud of and because no, of wait, that not just because, not just girls even guys including me, you even especially <laughs> me but i'm just saying because you, that's why i say you're a hall pass you're the perfect oh i like uh, that you were the you were the perfect teen boy that in terms of all every single boy trying to think with the dick you were the one that was thinking more than their just their dick you were thinking about other things and you were like you basically I were think, ahead I of the time acted. i think i acted like that but whatever you did whatever you did boy. whatever you did it worked and it basically played to her favor so having you like even sonam can vouch for that even so she could attest to that Mumta knowing that Sonam's hanging out with you and me, I, I think honestly, if it's just me and Sonam, she'll be like, okay. But knowing it's you and me, it's like, all right, she's good. Yeah. Like yeah. Sonam's good. Like Suhel's one, but then the Shri. All right, my Sonam's father is with him. Okay, so Sonam's father. Is with him. <laughs> Vijay, she's going with Vijay. Go. Go. <laughs> I, I love uh, her parents. I'm not gonna lie. They, I love they, I love you. Yeah, they're so awesome. I, I, there's Akash. something. There is something endearing about them, uh, which I, I understand. Of course, they're Sonam's parents, but even if they were just as, as as them too, I would have still, you know, loved them as is. I mean, of course, we have Sonam as a different story. No, but, I mean that's that's yeah. exactly the beauty of Parkwood. We got to know the parents, yeah. like like Sonam's parents, like my in-laws itself uh yeah. like ali's parents like father's parents everybody's parents your parents my parents we all got to know them we got to yeah. know at least we had conversations some we were scared of for example mariam is her dad he, that dude was massive we were all scared of him for some reason he was just he was just this I think I six two him six guy. well whatever him. bro he stands up he hits the ceiling he's tall uh <laughs> i'm talking about he hits the sky whatever 
Oh, so yeah. that's why they were in the tall uh, townhouse that's apartment. What no, I'm what? Just, I'm just, I'm just kidding. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. Because they Some were the only ones who had a townhouse, right? The, you didn't one have a lot of few. townhouses. One of the few. One of the few people. Yeah. Oh, so did uh, Sonam? No, not the Sonam no, either. No, she yeah. didn't. She didn't. And the thing is, like, we got to know people. The crazy thing is, I got to know Sonam's neighbors, like Bilal and them, like Faisal yeah. used to live right across. Um, and then in front of Ali Syrah and everybody used to live. And then Itisham. It, it, just so many, like Lil Kaj, Bikakash, Kruti. There's all so up, many, yeah, all all up. Up. there's like, so many people that we know in Parkwood, like all the kids, and that became our community. That became our yeah. thing. We used to have, you know, hangouts, birthday parties. We used to just invite and just it's the same people, but we used to just hang out and just be stupid, just listen to music, dance, have fun, goof off, like Yeah, goofing off was a was Well, a, we had a childhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We, together, honestly speaking, I don't think I had a childhood till I met you guys. That's yeah. why Parkwood is uh, Parkwood special, and it defines. That's why I call it success, because my life could have gone in many directions. Yeah, in many directions. Uh, when I was young, I thought I was going to be an actor, uh, or I could want it to be, or something else, or whatever. You have your dreams and stuff, and the situations that were ever presented in with and without Parkwood, it it could have gone in many shitty situations, and I kept. I and I feel like. The people we were surrounded with, we all didn't, we all dreamt, but we all knew to be good to each other. We all yeah. knew how to be present and be together because that's all we really had. Our parents were working, they were immigrants, they were in a land that they couldn't understand. We were in a land that we couldn't understand and we had to navigate through to a point where then 9 11 happened. 9 11 happened right there and then. Yeah. And I, that basically. I don't, think that, we had met. I don't think we had met. We met after 9 11. You came in 2002, right? To school? Started school in 2002? 2001 or 2002? No, 2002. you came in 2001. Well, yeah. And then you left and came back in 2002. No, I came in 1999 and I left back in 2000. So, so I you came were for there. four months. Yeah, I then you. Then when did you start OB? Obi was in 01 or I think 02. And I don't what? Uh, I don't know. But it was the starting of school. It was yeah, the starting the, the September, yeah. Because I was in school when September 11 happened. But I didn't meet you guys until the first three months. Didn't okay, yeah, whatever it is. Never mind. Yes, sorry. Not important. But yeah, go ahead. So when that happened, that changed a lot. Um, because especially being brown, Muslim, especially at that time, a lot changed in school. I had yeah. to look over my shoulder. Um, I did get names called. I get. I it's just like I didn't have it as bad as a lot of people, but I like. I ignored Fair a lot. Fear. I yeah. ignored. I tried to avoid those situations because I was like, "Yo, I'm going to get my ass." And I was a scrawny kid. I'm not going to basically survive if a big kid beats me. Like, no, I'm, I'm going to get my ass beat. Um, and at that moment, when we were together, none of us were judged. Even though it was more of a like you know, more Muslims and stuff in that at that time. I don't think we like i don't know do we make you feel like uncomfortable like we did i don't think any religion mattered i don't think anything we just were together we were just confined together our comfort zone no matter what happened we were just understanding and going through the same situation all at the same time um and that helped us that helped us navigate through it and that definitely helped me nurture and become someone and lead me to my wife marry somebody that's home um like if anything th like they, they're the most important uh, pieces in our lifetime like they that's why you say you're still stuck in new jersey i'm pretty sure by that you mean you still have some unresolved things for parkwood i feel like your time was cut too short because you basically went to you're the best example of a immigrant leaving their hometown to start a better life for their family or themselves in another place you basically left new jersey your home to start your life your career and you haven't had to come back you really came back momentarily as a guest you haven't come back yeah. and i don't think you have closed it off yet no i have not uh i have not come back um i've only visited jersey i don't feel like the only time i feel that I'm back is, is when I'm hanging out with you guys or something like that. But I think I left. 
see it's different right of course the, the your friends and everything are always with you but i think i left parkwood a little abruptly and i don't think i gave it that much importance as much as i do in my life right now because at that time i was in a mindset where first i moved to san antonio texas it was it was a question mark will i be able to stay there on my own it was the first time trying to do it uh, everything on my own now another thing that you guys have always done i don't know if you guys ever noticed or not but i am pampered i was always pampered by you folks in terms of the smallest things you know what i mean and uh, i don't i never realized it until you you get a partner in your life and they notice a few things and they're like wow you really don't do anything it, it's just you things are just handed to you you know and my friends including you kept it that way so I felt like we all I, had a little part to play in everything right but still you know when i left and kind of did it i wasn't sure if i was going to be able to stay there and i'm going to come back is it going to be am i going to be you know like uh this new job and are they going to keep me are they going to kick me out what's going to happen i mean there were a lot of questions and i think around that time you and i also had very few conversations in many many times but i remember you helped me uh set up talk to aku and uh, he he was able to I, i stayed at his place for the first, first two weeks you know what i mean and i didn't i didn't know anyone over there but you were like no 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 let me figure this out and you know that's what happened but when i left jersey i left in terms of like i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna come back with a bang you know what i mean yeah, i know i know what you're which, about. Uh, which uh, which is not a sad thing anymore because it, it kept getting better you know what i mean but the point was to come back and 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 fix things or help people uh whoever are stuck and let's bring them out too you know what i mean that's yeah. what the whole mindset was but uh you know you don't always things don't always go as you think they if you planned that they would sometimes yeah. they go better and in this case it turned out to be better for everybody i'm not saying it was an easy thing it was a struggle to the you know to the survival without a doubt for all of us not you know it took you some time to get out of jersey to uh, to find that job and everything like that but when you did it was different you know what i mean there was honestly speaking if you did not take the steps uh, like you don't realize this but you have a huge part in playing in how my life and a lot of people's life play in in a lot of directions um if you did not leave to start your career we would not have tried either because you left the laughter as soon as you left i tried leaving larab was leaving saka left yeah. uh usama was leaving like um Anna Hena was already they were working working um so yeah, yeah. was doing courses of being nurse and being like you know doing we were we were like partying it up and they were studying like started those working like basically our crew that we used to hang out with I spent every single day with uh for I, I'm I'm talking about we spent so many hours together so many so many so many hours in so many years yeah. that I don't know how we survived No, it was it was unlimited hours. How like, how did we how did we survive with no phones, no technology, no shows, no movies, no reason, no money? Uh, like we did so much. So much. We could sit and uh, we used to sit either outside of Anahina's house uh be my, behind my house. Uh behind your house or out, outside of my my apartment stairs yeah. or something like that. And we would sit and talk for hours god knows about what guess what you know one of us had a car i think i know fahad that was one of the first ones to have a car i was one of the first one yeah I was never in the yeah but there are a lot of stories of that that that's a whole different era that he had a whole spotlight you know? a girl hugged him once and fahad almost killed us <laughs> that's all you're gonna that's all you can that's all you're gonna say No, Fahad did uh Fahad is one of those silent friends, believe it or not. He he's one of those friends who you don't always see or something like that, but when there are those important moments in life, he he's always there and he's, he's always, always like, he's, he's always, always well wishing. You know? Always now Fahad is See this good things and bad things about uh Fadi, okay? Um about all very, of them. Very, very, no, yeah. no, very little bad compared to good. Yeah. Why? God bless Essen Uncle Soul like I mean wish him jannat 
I wish him the highest thing. This dude was awesome. He's a very important person in our life. Um, when Kitty, Gurdia, and Ali, Bila, Farianti, they lost as an uncle, I was there. It was beyond tragic. Uh, it, it was tragic for all of us. Um, it's That's why it's like, that is promise, but it's never good. It's never like, you know, easy. Faha to control. And he, in, 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 when I say control, he basically made the calls for the burial. He was taking steps ahead of how to make him proceed further so the whole family doesn't need to. He was making calls to the mosque and calling his, like, you know, who can do this? How? Like, he basically stepped up. And that's the unbelievable trait. Yeah. Like, when Eid happens, Eid is like in a Christmas, like, as far as like, Eid happens. He always comes, no matter what, and he gives E.D. for our kids. Every single E.D. Like, he is a beautiful soul. He's a beautiful soul. At the same time, extreme as fuck. <laughs> I think... Uh... I love you, Fabi. <laughs> but I'm gonna keep it real. You know, I'll, I'll be honest here. I... I don't feel the heat of that, of the, of the, you know, of the extremism, and I'll it's tell you why. I, I get it, I get it, and I'll tell you why. Maybe because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, male. Uh, but the last time I was uh, in Jersey, and I remember I was supposed to go to the high school to get something or something like that, but instead uh, we couldn't because it was a snow, snowstorm or something. And Ali was like, "Hey, you don't want to go? You want to go to go see Fadi?" Because we were right there uh, yeah. by our house, and we went to me. I had the most fun conversations with Fahad uh, about, you know, about cybersecurity, about quantum entanglement and everything like that. You know what I mean? It was the most uh, cerebral conversation that I felt that I had in years. And I think I really talked to him, uh, I think, a couple of weeks before my wedding. Mm -hmm. so heart to heart. Yeah. Which was at, I think, 12... 12, 12 a.m. my time. Well, I was in Chicago at that time, so I'm assuming it was like probably like no 9 p.m. my time, and it must have been like you know like 11 p.m. his time. And then we talked till 3 a.m. of my time Damn. about about religion, about excuse me, about all kinds of things. So every time I meet with Fahad, I feel me and him have like the most longest conversations, cerebral conversations. Um, still which we used to have way before he got a little serious you know and stuff like that so for me um still in somewhere fadi is still the same person i still enjoy talking to him for hours i wish i could do it again when we go back i'll probably reach out to him but the point is that it was uh, it felt good now i understand that he has had limitations because of uh, uh certain circumstances or certain life path that he has chosen religion just yeah, religion. That's fair, religion. But honestly, I don't know if it's right or wrong. But in some, some case, shape and form, being from what you were to the way you are trying to be, which you feel is good for you, requires a certain type of discipline. And cultivating that kind of discipline is not easy. So, oh, not at all. Person, yeah, every religious person that that is able to do it up to some some level. I have a lot of respect for them, you know. Uh, but I, I feel like but my thing is, my thing is, it's all about discipline. It's a calling. Some people find that. Some people find yeah. uh, relaxed. Like, for example, like yoga, meditation, working out. Yeah. They all give you the same feeling. They all uh, give yes, you the same yes. feeling. Many a times, yes. Uh, the serotonin. I, yeah, well, you could find that. Like the serotonin feeling, the dopamine feeling. Oh, like serotonin. The, you, I it's a yeah. serotonin. No, no. So it's basically the feeling you find in any enjoyment that's what religion is supposed to do like it gives you that path of uh, righteousness or belonging or like free or pureness whatever i don't have that feeling i don't have that co connection i i am more of a people person i live my my dopamine serotonin is more into reality than it is to books what about sufism what about it i have i don't have enough knowledge of, about that uh when i think of sufi i think about music Fine. Like I know it's another cast of I think Islam, another like you know like there's so many there's Neman there's uh, Shia there's Sunni 
Yo, bro, honestly, it's division. It's the same religion, different cast. I, 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 I don't get it. It's I don't get it. I don't get it. And I, I, that's a whole different conversation. But I, I don't want to I ask get into that later. Yeah, no, the reason I asked you this is because people find spirituality, right? So for you, it's music. And more than music, it's, it's towards your family. You know, you, yeah. you you see what's real and what's there. And that, that that's what really, really calms your spirits and you feel there's, enhanced. There's something, there's something I'll tell you something, okay? I believe there's higher power. Sure. I, I don't fear in God. And I'll tell you why. It's not, I'll tell you why. The people that created me are my parents. Fact, I came yeah. out of my mom. Fact, yeah. I ain't scared of her. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Actually, it, it, I, I share the same thinking. You know, like I mean, to me, for me, my parents would be, of course. I mean, my God would be my parents first, and of course, and they, then they're the one who give you religion. They they're the one who give you identity. Exactly. They're the one who give you everything. Yo, know, my thing, yes, higher power exists, respect religion, everything. Uh, the, yeah, everybody. I respect my yeah. religion that was bestowed upon me just like I respect my name. I'm not changing that about me. That was the identity. I'm going to make myself from that, whatever I was given. Whatever obstacle I was given, I'm going to make something out of it. I'm not going to, like, you know, just put it aside. But at the same time, I, the way people fear and, like, are obsessed with religion and living in God's path is hilarious because the people that you don't respect, the people that actually done everything for you, and I can, if you are not scared of them, if you're not like, you know, respecting them as high, and I, honestly, what are you doing? Like, if you can have the boss to do that, somebody that actually brought you into the world, put clothes on you, fed you, carried you for 10 months, like, did the labor, bro. Like, I can tell you as a parent, I'm, I don't want to be called God. I basically gave my legacy more of my, this is my legacy, whatever. But I know the work I put into it, too. Yeah. And my kids aren't scared of me. <laughs> they control me. But, you know, that religion is a separate topic. We'll get back to that. We'll get back into yeah. that. We'll do that for another day. Uh, but I want to, like, you know, yeah, I want to keep this to Parkwood. And I think we need to split Parkwood to two parts. Yeah. Uh, one part introduction. And because we're running on time, running low on time. Uh, we, I think we did great on introduction today. Uh, yeah. We can. Next time, we'll try to, like, I think our goal should be to bring them. So we could go down memory Oh, yeah, yeah. I would love to. We should, bring, we should definitely love to bring them there. Because we get to hear their side of the perspective too, right? I mean, They're also uh, role models. They're also role models. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. We're all absolutely. each other. And when you said about Fahad, you know, he doesn't, like, you don't get the feeling about him thinking about your Hindu or anything like that. Yes, I, yes. That's, that's why I say this. I, this is why I tell you this. That's why I say you're a member of the family and you transcend what your religion plays that's what he probably doesn't see he doesn't see you as what your religion are is he sees you as who you have been to him yeah and that might be the disconnect he has towards sodom or other people like this is not whatever this is the, the truth the, uh, like the reason why is because they probably don't have the same impact as you do and it's it's a very selfish thing to say and it's something that i've looked at from the both parts it's Certain people hold certain weight in your life. No matter how close you are to them, certain people do. Uh, uh, like they could be like in tiers of stuff. It could be like tier one, like you are my best, 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 best friend. This is my best, best, best friend. This is my best, best friend, best friend, friend, good friend. What you see that the different yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And everybody, we internally have that. We internally have that. There's certain people like the importance Fahad is to the Ali family is magnificent. The value, everything there is like <coughs> insane. At the same time, what Fahad and Ali have is what you and I have, in a sense. Uh, what the girls will have separately, the girls will have that bond. It just it, it's more of a comfort. It's because you can, yeah, be in each other's shoes in a sense where I can be like, I can have that bond. With, like we had that moments with Sonam, but we had it in a sense where this is a dope girl friend. Yeah. That this is somebody that we can talk about, but at the same time, the bullshit she gets or she goes through and she had to go through, we're not going to get that. She probably talked, she definitely talked that to uh, Guria, Sahar, and her friends, like her best friends and stuff. Same with yeah, my yeah. wife and stuff. Um, 
I'm pretty sure Saving Magna and everybody. It's just that that's why you transcend religion. That's what Parkwood is to me. It transcends religion, humanity. It just, it just is. It is the level of layer where it is more home to me than anything else that has felt before. Yeah. And yeah, that, yeah, yeah. and that's the platform I have used to build a relationship with my siblings. I didn't have a relationship with my siblings like that. I never knew my siblings. I never got to know my siblings. I had like, I did not understand my siblings till after I got married and Parkwood, aka my wife, aka that foundation came in play and we built off that. Then we now have moments where we spend time together. When we get together, we're not like awkward. We're just like, yo, let's, what are we doing right now? Where are we gonna go eat? Like, it's just like, there's no like, it's more grounded. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yes, I mean, it's not like there was ever an issue from you talking about your brothers or something, but it's kind of understood that they're younger, you know what I mean? And then they have their own <laughs> friends break and everything. Yeah, there's a gap. But now, when you, many a times you tell me about that, oh, we did this or we're going to go here, it, it makes me feel good, you know, where I'm like, oh, this is great. So, yeah. Yeah, bro. But yeah, like I said, we have to cut this short. Uh, thank you. I think it's already been long. This was supposed to be an hour podcast. We're an hour and 52 minutes in. This is part two of it. Part two. Uh, but Shri, as always, love you. We could talk love about dream too, shit. I don't think we'll be stuck with one topic normally. No. And we got to get better. We'll, we'll get better. We'll get better. We'll, we'll get more calibrated to our conversations. Yeah. But, right. but this is as real as it gets. This is what we do all the time. We, we're never on topic. You know, and this is what we used to do for hours and hours that we've spent. I used to sit and talk. God knows what we talked about. No technology, nothing, bro. Honestly speaking, priceless. So good. We actually had, and that's what worries me. Oh, no, fuck that. We'll talk about this later. I love you, Shree. Again, we're going to get into it. It's addiction. Uh, <laughs> all right, man. Uh, with that, thank you so much for joining. We are the new brand, Uncle Order, the new, <laughs> uncle, the new generation. The one who's trying to be better than the old ones, not the ones that judge you, I rape you. The one who sit you and criticize you because we were them. We were yeah. We were that generation. We're criticizing us, not just you. We were stupid. I am still. But <laughs> regardless, I am Suhail, aka Chef Sui. I'm, I'm with my. Thank you for joining Reintro. Thank you for joining.